So, hi everybody, Craig Hansen here. Welcome to my video. Uh, in this video, we're going to look with, uh, at a shot between, say, 10 and 30 metres, a, a chip or a small pitch shot. And it's going to be your, your stock standard chip or your, or your small pitch shot. And um, there's, it's still a, a grey area. Uh, a lot of people don't really know what they're trying to do with this shot. So I had a few emails and I thought I'd also uh, put a video out there and uh, have a look at some of the best players uh, at their swings, at impact. And uh, at least we know then uh, we're watching the best that um, we're uh, getting the correct information. So I've got Tiger Woods here at the uh, uh, Ryder Cup. This is a video taken from Terry Rolls. Uh, thanks for the use of your video, Terry. And um, we'll get in there and have a look at, just straight in at impact and compare it um, before we go through the rest of the swing and just compare it to uh, his address position so that's the impact position and that's his start position so we've got more we've got the shaft leaning more forwards at impact than than it is in the address position and this is really important this this, this shot is your stock standard shot uh, you're not trying to hit it high you're trying to compress it it's a trapping motion your left wrist is going to stay firm through the shot the right wrist is going to keep its angle. Uh, there's going to be a slight uh, weight transference into your left side. So we'll start back at the start and let's have a look at what happens with this swing. So one of the things that's still being taught and a lot of people practice with these small shots is not to break your wrists. And it's no wonder that everyone's hitting fat shots and thin shots and uh, developing the yips uh, with this type of information out there. It's a little strange because, I mean, we've got the best guys in the world playing uh, you know, live and on TV, and we can get a chance to analyse their swings. So we're standing with a narrow stance. The weight's left. You're probably going to look at getting the shaft and the left arm pretty much in a close line with the ball round about, say, in the middle of your stance. Now, the first thing that happens here in Tiger Woods' swing is he breaks his wrist going back. Now, if that was a line here, and you'll see that as he gets back into this position, he's broken his wrists quite a bit. So. We're looking at, with all your mobile phones, your smartphones, your handies, or whatever you want to call them, um, the iPhones, these, these quality of the cameras are getting better and better, so you can, you can get, the, get in there and, and film your own swing and or your own chipping action and, uh, and then compare it. So the right wrist is going to, it breaks back, and the right arm folds, and the right elbow stays close to the side. So the right elbow is going to stay closer to the side, as more closer than it would with the full or the normal swing. Okay, so you're creating a quite quite an angle in this right wrist and left arm here. Now you'll see as he comes down, you're, you're trying to maintain this angle. This looks easy. Oops, this angle in there, you're trying to maintain that. It looks easy, but it's not. Right down into the shot. I'll just go down a little bit here, and. You'll see there's a movement forward. You'll see that as he gets into impact, if you have a look at the camera stand in the background, see his shoulder here compared to where he started. There is a definite slight movement or transference of weight towards your target. That'll get your right knee into a deeper angle. That's at 77. Let me start it here. If I can just get that in there, right? Start it higher. And around about 85. Now these small things, these minute things, are really, really important. If you create these same positions, you're going to create the same shots. This is probably the only chance that a club golfer, your average golfer, has with putting and chipping and these small pitch shots, is to copy the exact positions and 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 perhaps create the same results. I don't think that the you know the club golfer is going to get to be swinging like Rory McIlroy or Garcia or Tiger Woods, but. These shots here, um, you base your entire short game from this stock standard chip or pitch, and from here you can extend out and then slightly change things and go into a higher shot. Now, if you if you use this shot anyway with your your 52, your 56, and your 60, you've got three different flights, and you can you can you know most people you get a lot of people hitting these shots fat because they're not getting in the right position. We'll get into that a little bit later, and then and then they're getting the thin shot. Because they're, you know, if they're flinching at it and they're almost scared or they've, they've got fear of hitting it fat, so they've got a mixture. And then after a while, 
lose their confidence, can convince themselves they've got some form of the yips. When I've looked at golfers who have uh, been yipping the ball or uh, not hitting their chips well, when we get right into the action and analyse it from both sides, there's um, more often than not really poor technique. So you've got left arm straight, you've got your feet close together, left arm and the club in one line I mean, you've got your feet close together, your right wrist is breaking on the way back, your right arm is folding and staying closer to the, closer to the side and here than it normally would. We're maintaining that angle in the right wrist, turning the body through, trapping the shot, hitting ball, hitting ground, hitting the thing on the way down, and as we go through the shot, you, know, you can almost have the effect that you could balance a, a glass of water here onto the face of it. It's not going to roll over, but the left wrist stays flat here, and the back of the right wrist has that slight curve in it, and the body turns, and the body and the chest turn through the shot. So let's have a quick look at somebody else. I'll just throw one in here. Okay, so you want to get the toe of the club pointing up. So left arm, the club in one line, feet close together. Probably want to just turn your left foot out a little bit. That'll help you turn through the shot. Okay, right wrist breaks. Right elbow stays close to the side. We're going to trap the shot. When I look at golfers, when I get into this position here, I, sometimes I put a line down the shaft from in here when the hands get opposite the right leg. And, I mean, it sounds like a bit of technique, but we, I normally see these top players in between, say, 25 and 35 degrees. I mean, there's not really much room in between there and there. And and that's like a rule of thumb for me. You know, we'll see that impact the right wrist. You'll see, we're hitting it on the way down. If I have a look at you, like the normal club golfer. I had someone there, someone there the other day, and we worked on it a little bit. Sort of when I see that sort of setting up with perhaps the weight there a little bit too far back. Um, good in, in in this guy's a pretty good player. You know, he plays off a handicap of six or something. He's got great feel. When he when, yes, I see this all the time when the hands come down and get sort of opposite the leg there, they're getting into the high forties or or even even worse or much higher, and then creating a, a flipping effect. As you'll see in here, there's a different, it's not compressed, so, I mean, it's hard to sort of flight it, it's, you get a, it's when it's sitting up, okay, it's not too bad, but you, when I see in this position here, I'll see the, the right arm from the Touring Pro, and I'll see there's this gap between the right arm here and, and the actual shaft, whereas most players will get an extension here, instead of having the shaft here, so you'll see the left wrist is broken, and the right wrist has lost its angle. And that's just enough to sort of, every now and again, just scull one across the green or hit a little fat. And, um, you know, you lose your confidence a little bit. So there is more technique in, in this shot than what people think. When you're looking at it from on the way back, we'll get uh, a couple of swings out here just quickly and have a look. That's every ballast here, right here. This, for this area here, you've got to stand in really, really close to the ball. Obviously, you've got to get your grip perfect. So, your right hand's got to be up on top of the club. Now, you want to be able to stay pretty close to this line here on the way back. So, your club's going to go up between, up on through your, normally up through your right forearm. So you're getting the club on a perfect level or a perfect plane. Now, the toe of the club has to be pointing up, so you have to have your grip good. Now, you might get the toe of the club, just say, between 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock, that's okay. But you definitely don't want to get the thing pointing over this way over here. Then you're going to dig into the ground. So, there are, when I say the, from this side, I'll say that the right arm will fold, the right wrist breaks, and the toe of the club points up. Now they've got it parallel to the original shaft plane. That's something what you want to get. If you take it up too steep, you're going to chunk it or hit big divots. If you get your angle under here somewhere, you're probably going to hit behind it and hit it fat. So the right arm breaks, 
sorry, the right arm folds, the right wrist breaks, it comes straight back down on the shaft plane. We hold the angle in the right wrist, continue, you've got to keep turning your body, otherwise you won't be able to hold that angle in your right wrist. And as you get through the shot, with this sort of style, with this type of with chips and pitches, these small shots here, your club's not going to release over into 12 o'clock, so the right palm's going to point up, or your, your logo and your glove's going to point to the sky. So, if you get these, these positions, if your right arm folds, your right wrist breaks, the toe goes up, your stance is narrow, you get a little bit of weight transference, there's quite a few things, but if you do it and you practice it in front of a mirror, you film it with your phone, if you create the same positions, if you create the same lines, you'll create the same shots. Hope it helps. Um, good luck with it. And uh, if you want to uh, check out my website, if you want to send something through, uh, I can have a look at it for you. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.